Hi everyone, and welcome to Jane Talks Real. It's Slayer Sunday, where I will be talking about and reviewing all the episodes of Buffy the Vampire Slayer in order. Today, I'm looking at Season 1, Episode 9, The Puppet Show. We start the episode with a creepy POV shot going through a talent show before it lands on something extra creepy, a freaky ventriloquist dummy and the guy who operates him, Morgan. Now, before we go any further, the sole reason I am creeped out by ventriloquist dummies is this butthole right here, Slappy the Dummy from Goosebumps. Well, this creepy little shit is called Sid and he's gonna be in this episode a lot. You know what's scarier than dummies? Cordelia singing. Giles agrees. He's been duped into producing the talent show by the new principal, and Buffy, Willow, and Xander show up to mock his unwanted role. But the joke's on them because Principal Snyder is right behind them and forces them to participate. Snyder is played by professional dickhole actor Armin Shimmerman, who plays Quark on Deep Space Nine. He's so good at playing an asshole that you will come to hate his face in the show, but he seems like such a nice guy in real life. The trio don't take their forced participation well. Morgan and Sid are up next to practice and their act sucks, until Sid's voice changes and he starts insulting Morgan. After practice, Emily the ballerina hears spooky noises in the locker room and has jumped by something and into the credits we go! The main trio are debating what the hell to do to pass off as a talent, and suggestions include a dramatic reading, Willow playing the piano, and Buffy slaying vampires on stage. Their thought process is interrupted by Morgan, or more specifically Sid, who is catcalling the girls. At first they find it charming, but then Buffy turns on Morgan when Sid crosses the line. You know what they say, once you go wood, nothing's as good. Snyder, meanwhile, reads Giles the Riot Act, establishes Buffy, Willow and Xander as troublemakers, and also points out the strange occurrences so far, referring to both iRobot Eugene and Witch. The piece is shattered by the discovery of Emily's body, and Giles explains that her heart has been removed, which is usually the sign of a demon. But a demon would have no use for a big old knife. Did I mention that I hate this school? They all investigate, questioning all the participants of the talent show, and the connecting factor of all their statements is Morgan, who has been displaying some very odd behavior of late. Buffy goes to find him and he seems to be arguing with Sid. She questions him, and not only does he start grabbing his head in pain, but Buffy's dress is also ridiculously short. Uh, madam, we are this close to seeing your hoo-ha. Buffy tries to approach Morgan, but Sid once again pipes up and tells her to back off. Morgan tries to tell Buffy something, but changes his mind and splits. After school, Buffy breaks into Morgan's locker, but she's busted by Snyder who grabs her arm. Uh, dude, I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to grab students like that, even if you are an asshat. He warns her that he's going to figure out her secret and watches her while she goes through Morgan's locker. Sid is gone, and in fact, he and Morgan are spying on her. They then have an argument with Sid referring to Buffy as the last one so he can be free. Whatever Sid's plan is, Morgan refuses to be a part of it. Back at home, Buffy has a nice chat with Joyce before going to bed and holy hell that scared the shit out of me! Buffy is woken up by something jumping on her and her screaming brings Joyce running, but she can't find anything. The next day, Cordelia is whining to Giles about her place in the lineup. Sod off, Cordelia! But Giles points at Cordelia's hair which sends her running off in a panic. Giles is low-key chaotic, and I love it. Buffy tries to convince the others that Sid, sans Morgan, was in her room last night, but Xander thinks it was probably a cat, while Giles assumes it was a nightmare. He does have a lead on a possible suspect, however, one of a team of seven demons who take human form and have to kill and harvest organs to maintain their humanity. This means the killer could still be Morgan, but Giles points out that he seems to be getting weaker, whereas the demon would be getting stronger. Buffy goes to class where Sid does a Natalie French. Yeesh. The teacher confiscates Sid because Morgan is messing around, and it reminds me of that scene in Child's Play 2 where Miss Kettlewell confiscates Chucky from Andy. Maybe that's why I'm so on edge because I know how that scene ended up. Sid continues to talk from the cupboard, and of course, Morgan gets the blame. When he goes to collect Sid later on, he's more agitated than ever, and Sid is missing from the cupboard. It's revealed that Xander stole Sid to prove that he's just a puppet. With Sid occupied by a fellow dummy, Buffy goes looking for Morgan, but it's all quiet and creepy backstage and surprise, it's Principal Snyder. He's here with his usual threats and dickish behavior. Back in the library, Willow reads that dolls and mannequins can become fully human by harvesting organs, which is bad enough, but Xander takes his eyes off Sid and he disappears. <laughs> Despite Snyder's warning, Buffy continues to hunt for Morgan, and finds him, 
dead, with his brain missing. Then either Dobby or a pissed off phantom must have entered the talent show because the chandelier comes crashing down on top of Buffy. Sid is on the offensive and attacks Buffy with a knife. She flings him away and pins him against the wall because, let's face it, he's two foot tall and made of wood. They both realize very quickly that the other's motives don't add up and they call a truce. Sid explains that he's a demon hunter and became a dummy thanks to a curse. He's killed the other six demons that Giles mentioned previously and he mistakenly thought that Buffy was number seven. Killing all seven will free him from his curse, but now they have the two organs they need, the demon will be pretty impossible to locate. Except, light bulb moment, now they have the organs they need, the killer will be absent from the talent show. The show? What? It's gonna start. While waiting for Giles to gather everyone together, Buffy reveals to Sid that she's the Slayer, and he reveals to her that being free from the curse doesn't mean becoming human again. When I say free... You mean dead. Giles gets everyone together, but no one is missing. Um, question. With two participants of this thing brutally murdered, why has it not been called off? It's kind of morbid, don't you think? Anyway, Giles has to get this roaster cooking. So he goes off and Sid also disappears, leaving Buffy to discover Morgan's discarded brain. Willow hacks into the school records and Morgan's medical file turns up brain tumors, which is why he was getting headaches and acting weird, making the brain useless to the demon, hence why they're still here. Realization hits that the next smartest person involved in the talent show and therefore the next target is Willow, but hang on, why is Mark the Magician asking Giles to help him with his act? Giles is locked down onto a table with a blade above his head and Mark admits that this isn't a magic trick. Buffy rushes in and takes on the Mark demon while Fast Hand Xander saves Giles from a splitting headache. Mark is fully demoned and majorly pissed, but Sid dives into the fray and the ensuing fight puts Mark right in the blade's path. Xander lets go of the rope and oop, there goes his head. Sid finishes him off with a stab to the heart, which ends both of their lives. The curtains finally open on a very weird scene. I don't get it. Alongside the credits, we get to enjoy Buffy, Willow, and Xander's piss poor attempt at doing a scene from Oedipus. So this is one of the most memorable episodes of the first season due to how damn creepy it is. It also has a whodunit element to it, where everyone is a suspect from Morgan to Sid to Principal Snyder, and the fact that it was none of them didn't detract from the story. The end fight of this one is much better than the end fights of episodes like Teacher's Pet and The Pack, because it's got a more interesting setting and there are more people involved. Instead of Buffy just coming in and killing the thing in question, it's a team effort, with Buffy, Sid, and even Xander doing their part. I'm on the fence with this episode because it is memorable and well laid out, but it's so freaking creepy because I seriously hate ventriloquist dummies. Ugh. There are no vampires again in this episode, the fourth instance of this in season one alone but we do have four deaths to add to our tally. There are three human deaths, Emily who was killed and de-hearted by Mark, Morgan who was killed and de-brained, also by Mark, and Sid who, even though he was trapped in a puppet body, was still a human, and he just kind of died when the curse ran out. We also have one demon death, which is Marky Mark there, who got his head chopped off by Xander and then got stabbed through the heart by Sid. This brings our running total to 16 human deaths, two transformations, 13 vampire deaths, one monster death, and two demon deaths. So there you have it, that was The Puppet Show. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below or come say hi on social media. If you enjoyed this video, then please like, share, and subscribe. I'll speak to you soon, and don't let the vampires bite.